Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab, and what I got here is the killer Sony A7S. And I wanted to show you basically the menus and the main buttons that you're going to need to know to, you know, use the camera to its fullest potential. So looking at the top of the camera, we have the exposure comp dial here. This is great. Um, it's got a nice click tension to it, which I like. Um, up here on the top, we have a control dial. And this control dial is, uh, when you're using manual mode, is going to default as aperture control. This rear control dial right here that you use your thumb for, that's going to be shutter speed by default. All right, and then you got your mode dial here where you can select which kind of mode. You got all different modes, panorama, movie mode, scene mode. The camera will actually select different scenes. Then you got full auto. When in doubt, put it in full auto. The camera will do a pretty good job 95% of the time, trust me. Um, I usually use aperture priority mode myself. And then manual mode for, you know, creative photography and when you're doing, you know, hardcore video, things like that. And, of course, here you got your power button to toggle and a nice high-quality shutter button here. And then you have a custom C1 button as well. Um, in addition to that, you have your hot shoe here, multi-purpose hot shoe on the top, and you got your viewfinder. Alrighty, so continuing on the back side of the camera, we have the autofocus and manual focus um, toggle with the AEL here. So you can toggle it between autofocus, manual focus, and AEL. So right now, with it in the up position, all you have to do is hit this button, and it'll automatically switch the camera into manual focus or autofocus, depending on what mode you're in. So that's a cool feature, and your thumb can just basically hover over this, like so. Your thumb will go like that. And then you have your thumb wheel here, which is also your white balance, display, and your shooting mode. And if you rotate the thumb wheel, that's going to be your ISO. So that in conjunction with this thumb wheel and the pointer finger on the front here will be your tri-navi setup for when using manual mode. Uh, then don't forget you have your C2 button here, custom button, which is also your zoom, magnify zoom. And you have a C3 button here, which is your garbage can. You can also make this down button something if you want. And then you have the menu button over here. And of course, don't forget there's the center button here as well. And on this side, you have the movie record button right on the right here. Okay. All right. So now that we have the camera on, let me show you what some of these buttons do and how they behave. Um, for example, the display button will cycle through the different display modes as you can see. Uh, white balance, obviously, well, that'll bring you up to the white balance area over here. See that? That's where you can set your custom white balance. I'm actually using custom white balance right now. This is where you set it. So I gotta set it back to custom. And that's one thing I wanted to go over with the menu. Um, it, when you go through the menu here, notice how some stuff's grayed out. And it's because it depends on what shooting mode you're in and also what quality you're using, whether it's JPEG or RAW, because certain features aren't available in RAW quality and so forth. So that's one reason why you might see some grayed out stuff in the menu. But another thing I wanted to show you, check this out, is this function button. This thing is awesome. Watch this. You hit function and it comes up to this quick, it's almost like a quick navy where you got 12 preset slots and you could program this to whatever you want. That's very powerful and it's a great feature so you don't have to go in the menu to try to dig and find settings. So I wanted to make sure you knew about that one. I use that all the time. Alrighty, so here we are in the menu system and as you can see you have basically two rows. You got the upper row here where it's your main categories and then you have your lower subcategories which you know vary depending on what upper category you know you're in so if you use the wheel here you can turn and this one will do the down or you can use the navigation arrow here to go up to the top see that so you can change which category area to quickly navigate or you can go down and now we'll see how I'm on the numbers so that's how the menu system works it's very easy to navigate and find what you need quickly. Um, you just have to know what you're looking for though and that can be a little bit daunting at times. So one thing I wanted to note in the menu system is how you will see some stuff grayed out from time to time and that is because you're not in the correct shooting mode or you might be in the wrong quality setting for that particular feature at any given time. So keep that in mind if you see something grayed out that's probably why. This first area here is where you set you know your image size and quality. Right now I have it set to JPEG, 
And I also have the file format for video set to XAVCS, which is the higher format. You can change that. These are your different types of formats. See that? So I'm just going to scroll to number two. And then you got your record setting. So now you can select that and you can change which type of actual um, record format you're using. It goes up to 120. See that? It's very nice. All right, and then you can also record dual video. So if you turn that on, you can actually record simultaneously whatever high quality setting you want, and then a lower quality MP4 video will also be written to the card at the same time. So that's a great feature. We got your flash mode, flash comp, all that stuff. A lot of this stuff's basic. This is your focus mode. Um, you're going to have a couple different types of modes here. You got autofocus, single shot, you got continuous, direct manual, and manual. All right. And then focus area. Right now I have it set to flexible spot. It's my favorite mode. Um, that basically just allows you to move the uh, cursor around. See it right here? And when there's a little arrow to the left, that means there's more options. So notice when I hit the left arrow, whoops, I hit up. Notice when I hit the left arrow, it changes to medium and then small. It's actually changing the size of the flexible spot itself. So that's what that does. And then this is the center focus. This is zone mode, and this is wide mode. So wide mode will use the whole scene. See that? It'll select what it thinks it needs to focus on. All right, <clears throat> going back to the menu. And then you got focus settings. So focus settings is basically just whatever current, whatever focus mode you're currently in, um, you can adjust those settings. So in wide range, there's really nothing to adjust, but when you're in flexible spot, that will give you the ability to move the cursor around, and uh, move the focus point rather. That's what that feature does. And that's actually what's programmed to C1 by default. Your custom one button is actually focus settings. So I like that um, set there. It works great for when using manual mode. AF illuminator, that's just the light that lights up for when it's really dark to help the camera focus. It shoots the beam out the front. Exposure comp and the exposure comp step, you can change that if you like. Uh, here's your ISO, different metering modes. Multi is going to do the whole scene. Then you got center weight. We'll use the center 33% or so. And then uh, the spot focus will use just a very small, you know, like little tiny 5, 8% area. You can also get to these um, features really quickly by hitting the function button. And you can program all these different features to your 12 presets, like I told you about earlier. But I'm just going through the whole menu quickly here. So you can see all the features because all this stuff can be programmed, customized, you know, to your function, you know, your 12 slots there. Uh, white balance is set to custom one. Uh, dynamic range optimizer and auto HDR. Uh, this is where you can play with those settings. Creative style. Creative style is basically how the camera processes the JPEG files. That's how you need to look at it. That's, that's how I understand it. And you can basically go through here and select what you want. And you can see how it processes them differently. It's a pretty cool feature. And once you go in these, you can actually go in any of these features and then manipulate the settings. So for example, let me go into Vivid. And then if I hit over to the right, see, now I can adjust the, the uh, contrast, uh, sharp saturation, and sharpness um, from the default setting that Sony already set up. So that's what these creative styles are. And I usually just use standard, just so you know. But uh, neutral is also a nice one for flat colors, if that's what you're looking for. All right, I'm just going to go back to standard. Go to menu. And then we got picture effect. Picture effect is an interesting feature. You can basically do creative things with the camera. It's like it applies these cool effects. See the toy camera effect? And then if you notice how there's an arrow, so that means there's more options. Toy, cara, uh, toy camera with different colors. You got pop. You got posterization, retro, soft key. You got partial red, and of course you can change the color. See how cool that works. High contrast, black and white. I really like that feature. And so on. That's what picture effect does. Let me just go back. And then we got picture profile. Picture profiles for video. And if you go in here, you can actually change what profile mode you want, and you could see how it affects. So what these actually are, uh, I'll go over them with you real quick. Check this out. <clears throat> All right, so PP1 is just your standard movie gamma. PP2 is still gamma. PP3 is ITU709 gamma. 
PP4 is ITU709 standard. PP5 is Cine 1 gamma. PP6 is Cine 2 gamma. And PP7 is S log 2 gamma. And that's the really high quality um, one where you get the maximum dynamic range. So if you want to use that one, that's going to be all the way down here. And you can see how flat it makes the video, uh, the image look. And that's what the video looks like too. So you're going to need to process this video in like Final Cut X or, you know, Adobe Premiere, or things like that to get the most out of it. Because it looks pretty crappy right off the camera. It's super high dynamic range and you can really get much better quality than what the camera outputs, you know, on the more, you know, I could say more processed PP1, for example, or when you have it off. All right. So that's what that is. All right, going back to the menu, we have some zoom options, zoom magnifier and things like that. Long exposure, noise reduction, you can turn that on or off. High ISO, noise reduction, you can adjust those options there. Smile and face detection, you're going to want to turn that on in my opinion. Uh, definitely the face detection because it allows the autofocus system to recognize when faces are in front of you and it, uh, it really prioritizes and it, it works awesome. Smile detection I don't use too much, but the facial, facial recognition I do use. So I recommend turning that on. Soft skin effect is pretty cool if you're using JPEG mode, um, it's, you know, which I am using. If you're taking pictures of your kids running around and stuff like that, uh, it'll smooth the skin out for you. It does a pretty good job too. It's like doing portraiture in Photoshop, but it does it on camera for you. All right, over under here, you got movie options, steady shot. It's not applicable because I'm using a, a prime lens right now. You got color space. I like to use Adobe RGB. Auto slow shutter, that'll help with video if the shutter gets really slow. You can turn that off if you want. Audio recording is set to on, but you can turn that off if you're using a separate audio device and you can change your audio level here. You can actually adjust your timing of the audio out if you want, right there, wind noise reduction. And then you have memory. This is where you pro program your memory um, slots on the mode dial. You have different memory modes, so you can program them in there to whatever settings you want and you can manipulate that and then recall them quickly just by turning the mode dial to one or two. It's a really, really great feature. All right, so next we're moving on to the gear settings. All right, so next what we have here is Zebra. And what Zebra is, it's a, it's a great feature for video. And when you turn it on, basically what it does is it shows you the highlights um, in, it'll, in a Zebra pattern. Let me show you what I mean. See that? See the Zebra? And you can adjust the power of it. And that's really good for ensuring that you have the highlights exposed correctly in you know, different situations. So that's a really nice feature that's built in. It's also on the A7R and other cameras. Um, manual focus assist, that's a great feature. Um, let me show you what that does. If I just hit my function button quick, I'll just go in here and change my focus mode to manual. And now watch what happens when I hit C2. See that, how it brings up that thing? And then I can zoom in, and it helps you fine tune the focus. So that's what Focus Magnify does. You could turn that feature on and off. I'm just gonna go back to function, go back to autofocus. Menu. Like I said, function will get you the settings really fast. So, and just on default, it's pretty good. Um, fat focus Magnify time I have set to no limit because I hate when it times times out after two seconds when you almost have it and then it just times out. Um, grid line I have set to rule of thirds. That's basically when you look at the screen here, you can see how there's a, see these fine lines here? That's the rule of thirds. It just helps um, with compositions and things like that. And you can change it. There's a couple different grid options. See that? I like rule of thirds the best myself, but it's uh, personal. Um, marker display. This is a cool feature. This is for video specifically and it makes sense it has a little video icon there on the left see but basically what it does is it puts up grid lines different types of grid lines and it overlays them when you're recording video um, so safety zones things like that that's what that is and that's a nice feature i did play with it a little bit take advantage of that if you need it audio level display you can turn that on or off got your peaking here see your peakings let me show you that real quick notice when i hit this manual focus you'll see that red stuff come up see those red dot line like little blinkies those are your, that's focus peaking. And I have it set to red. And that's basically just a way to assist your focusing when you're in manual focus. You can use those highlights, the focus peaking lines to, you know, ensure that you have the focus really, really close. 
and um, I use it all the time when I'm using manual lenses. It works awesome. Oh, yeah, and you could change the color and stuff like that. Live view display. Okay, this option here, when you're using manual mode in the studio, for example, you're going to want to change this to setting effect off. When you're not using that, you're going to want to have it to setting effect on. And um, basically, when it's set to setting effect off, this will act like an optical viewfinder, and it won't act like a live viewfinder. So in this mode, it's acting like a live viewfinder. So your white balance and your exposure comp and all that, it's going to actually look like what you have the camera set to. But when you have this set to off, it's going to behave more like an optical viewfinder. So you're not going to see the white balance or anything like that. And which, but you need that in, uh, when you're using, you know, off camera flash because the camera doesn't know, you know, what the exposure is supposed to be when you're using manual mode. So it's like, it's going to see dark, you know, it's just going to look black if you have it set to on. So that's what that is. Pre-AF. That basically, I, I recommend turning that off. Um, basically the camera will pre-focus on stuff even when you don't hit when, even when you don't press the shutter halfway and you could turn that off and it'll save some battery life. So I recommend turning that off unless you want the camera to constantly be focusing. I mean, it does make it a little faster in some situations, but overall I like having that off. Um, zoom settings, I, <clears throat> I like to use optical only, but clear image zoom does work pretty good. Uh, if you want to get a little extra zoom out of your camera and or lens. Finder monitor, that's referencing the electronic viewfinder versus this monitor here. So it's, it's going to switch auto. Like, so if your eye goes over, it automatically switches. See? Release without lens is enabled by default. That's basically so you can put a fully manual lens that has no electronics on it and the camera will still fire. Because remember, it doesn't know no lens or a fully manual lens attached. If it doesn't see electronics, it thinks there's nothing there. So this allows you to sh the camera to shoot anyway. So you have to enable that on some of the cameras. But like I said, this one was enabled on default. Autofocus with shutter, auto exposure lock with shutter. So those options, silent shooting. That works really well. Let me show you. Here's what it sounds like. See that? I just took three shots. I think it's set to auto HDR or something. Let me see here. Yeah, it's set to auto HDR. Let me change that. All right. Like I said, the function menu, see that? All right, watch. See that? That's one shot. Silent shooting. On. Watch this. See that? So the beep is still there. The camera beep, you have to turn that off separately. But there's no shutter sound. So that's pretty amazing. I like that feature. It's virtually silent. But obviously the camera is still beeping, so you got to turn the camera beeps off also. Tronic front curtain. Shutter, I recommend turning that on. I think it's on by default though. Here's some other settings, your bracket order. If you put an APS-C size lens on there, the camera will automatically switch to crop factor mode. I like that. Autofocus micro adjust, you can adjust the micro autofocus if um, you know your lens is slightly off. Sometimes that's good for really fast lenses. That's what that is. Face registration also, you can register your like your kid's face or something in there. And then, uh, you know, if you're watching like a show, um, the camera will prioritize your kid's face to make sure it tracks the focus. It's an awesome feature. And, you know, if you uh, take advantage of it, you can get some killer shots. I mean, you can get good shots anyway, but. All right, so lens compensation. That's basically, you know, the vignetting and all that. You can change that, turn it off, uh, distortion, all that. Those are those options. Video light mode is set to power link, but you can change that. Function menu set and custom key settings. All right, so you remember how I told you if you hit the function button, you have all those cool settings? Well, this is where you build that basically database. So see this, you got your upper row and then you have your bottom row. Moving on, we have the custom key settings and that refers to C3, C2, C1. And also a lot of the other keys are customizable like the center button key, the control wheel. You can change a lot of things in here. And that's where all those options are. All right. Well, let me go back to the menu. Then we have the dial setup. Like I said, default, um, you got the front and the back shutter speed and aperture number. And you can change that. You can swap that around. Um, dial EV, you can have that as the exposure comp if you don't want the wheel up here to do it. You know, again, very powerful and, um, you know, lots of options. Very highly customizable. You can actually lock the wheel, too, if your thumb always hits it. You know, you can change that. Movie button, same thing, you can turn that off if you don't want to use that. All right, so next what we have here is the Wi-Fi settings and sense of smartphone and so on. 
that's where all that stuff is. Airplane mode, you can turn that on uh, if you want to make sure your camera is not using any power or anything like that, but I assure you it's not. It only uses Wi-Fi when the camera is in an application that requires it. It's not always on just sitting there, so you know. All right, this is where you set up your access point and all that type of stuff. This is where your applications are, and that's a very powerful feature of the camera using different applications. So I'm not going to go into detail in this video on that, though. This is the play area. This is where you can change your different, uh, you know, viewing modes, uh, depending on if you're, you have different folders for the videos and things like that. So you can navigate all that stuff in here, and you can change, you know, whether your images rotate normally, things like that. Some more options here, printing order, enlarge image, and so on, 4K. And then over here in the suitcase, we've got a bunch more options. So I'm just going to go over them real quick. Uh, viewfinder brightness, or monitor brightness, is one of those features that you can adjust. And if you click and go to sunny weather mode, that's a great feature when it's sunny out. If you're having a hard time seeing the screen, switch it to that, and I guarantee you'll be impressed with how bright the screen gets. But normally, I just have it set like so manual and you can have it see how i said it's set to plus two so this is what it's normally like plus two looks much better it is going to use more battery but uh that's how i have it set uh viewfinder i have set to normal you can you know set that to manual and add some brightness to that as well if you like volume settings you can change that audio signals remember the beep i was telling you about before uh to make the camera completely silent you would need to turn the beep off as well that's where this option is i have it set to on you can turn that off there. Tile menu, that will turn the menu system into the more picture style. So if you're having a really hard time with all these features and you want to see pictures and stuff, you can switch that to on. Mode dial guide, I have that turned on right now. Basically what that is, is when you switch the, mode, switch the dial, it's going to tell you what mode it is. I just did that for this tutorial purpose, but normally that feature is off, but that's what that does. Mode dial guide, let me turn that off. Uh, delete confirmation, you can change that. Display quality. I have this set to standard because uh, I normally put that on high, but Gary Friedman did a test with the voltage, and high uses a lot more voltage uh, compared to standard, and the quality is not noticeable enough to justify the extra voltage used, so I have it set to standard uh, to save some battery life. I wanted to point that out. Nice work by Gary there. Cleaning mode, this is for if you want to clean your sensor and stuff. Remote control. You can change your settings like that. A lot, of, a lot of options here. And notice how some of them are grayed out because you have to be using certain modes and you have to have certain cables connected and whatnot for the features to be enabled. USB connection is set to auto. You can change that to mass storage if you want, but auto generally works. And this is where you can set your date and time, all that stuff. Language, you can change your language here. See all these different languages? That's where that option is. So it's in the suitcase four if you need to change your language. Format, this is where you format the memory card. I use that feature all the time. So it's suitcase five, constantly doing that. And display media info uh, version. This will display the camera version. And you can reset the camera right here if you want. And so this will show how many pictures you can take and stuff. Pretty cool. So that's pretty much it going over the A7S menu system. So I hope you guys got something out of this and please feel free to ask questions. I'll catch up with you on Sony Alpha Lab and stay tuned for the full A7S review coming soon. All right, take care.